favor? Yeah. We're from Fort Brace, sir. One of our scouts picked up your herd. We ain't on Army territory, are we? No, sir. Pawnee territory. Colonel Hiller's orders are that you're not to proceed until further notice. Hey, that wouldn't be Colonel Frank Hiller, would it? Yes, sir. I scouted for him for three years. Yeah, I know him. He's a good man. What's the reason for the order? The Pawnee are hostile, sir. Colonel Hiller can't guarantee any white man's passage across the territory. Supposing we do wait, what'll we be waiting for? Well, reinforcements are due at the fort, sir. When they arrive, we'll be able to police the territory properly. If they arrive in time. They're interested in the fort, sir. If they attack, that's what they'll be attacking. That is, if you stay put. And supposing the reinforcements don't get to the fort in time? Well, in that case, you'll be on your own, sir. There's a couple of nervous soldier boys. Well, them two's got a right to be nervous. Frank Hiller don't scare easy, I know that. Well, it hurts too much out in the open. If we're gonna dig in, we'd better find a place with cover. Well, I'll ride on ahead and see what I can find. All right, I'll get the herd moving. You leave a marker. Lizzie, get that firewood into Wishbone. Stick them out for you. Don't stand there. Put your arms out. Come in friendship. Is that why you threw the lance? The lance is buried in the earth, not in your heart. I saw the soldiers come and speak with you. I followed. I did not wish to speak to you until you were alone, with none of your people to listen, and with none of mine. You got your wish? What's it all about? I pay a debt. You freed me where I was held captive, in the east. Now I warn you, take your herd around the mountains. That's two weeks out of our way. It would save many lives. Well, it's your tribe that's on the warpath. I can say no more. Oh, well, Gala, you've been in the east. You know how many white men there are, how strong his armies are. The fort is a small one. Even if you wiped out Fort Brace, they'd send in enough soldiers to wipe you out? I have spoken so in the councils of my people. They heard me, but also they heard the orders of the white man. What orders? To give up the freedom of the plains and the mountains, to live on a reservation. I'm not saying it's the best thing for the Pawnees. Under the circumstances, it's all you can do. I have a son. He is 12 years. In another year, he will be a man. I would like to see my son a man. Then call out this attack. I would not be listened to. Maybe there is a way. You're my prisoner. I came to you in peace. I'm going to take you into Fort Brace. Are you so hungry for the praises of your soldiers? I'm hungry for a way to stop this bloodshed on both sides. When your tribe finds out that you're being held prisoner at the fort, they'll make some kind of a deal. They wouldn't attack knowing it would mean your life. Look, I'm not just trying to save two weeks' time for that herd. I'm trying to save the lives of you and your people. Maybe even your son. Sergeant of the Guard, 
Post number one. Two white men and an Indian approaching. I'll get the colonel. Oh. Open the gate. Nolan, you couldn't have shown at a better time. Colonel Hiller? How did you catch him? We didn't, Colonel. He's given himself up voluntarily. Sergeant, take the horses. Ogala is giving himself up? That's right. We know him. He's a friend of ours. Lock him up. I wish you'd put that a little differently. Why couldn't you say, find comfortable quarters for a guest? The United States Army doesn't extend hospitality to Pawnee chiefs. It might be better if you did. Find comfortable quarters for our guest. Yes, sir. Follow me, please. Ogala's given himself up so that his people won't attack the fort. He realizes that in the long run, if he goes against us, it'll be suicide for him and his people. Well, this is Gil favor my trail boss, Colonel Hiller. Glad to know you. You might as well stay the night here. You can't get your herd moving till morning anyway. Right. All right. Sergeant! Three Indians approaching. They wouldn't stop at a voice command, sir. Well, I can't. A trunks flag. One gentleman inside. I let them see how undermanned the fort is. You send patrol into Red Hill. Six men. Your scouts are good. Our braves better. We hold men. We offer their lives for our chief's freedom. I can't make a trade with you unless I see the goods you're offering. I'd have to be sure they were in good condition. You be sure of nothing. You send our chief back, we return soldiers to you, alive. No harm. I have only your word for that. It is enough. We are not white. Your men be alive. Only two more daybreaks. If I decide to send Agala back to his tribe, one of my officers will take him to you. Six lives. Soldiers in Snake Canyon. a day's ride from here. Yeah, maybe even a day and a half. I boasted to those Indians. I said I'd send an officer to pick up the patrol they'd captured. I buried the last surviving officer last week. I'm in a trap, Nolan. If I commissioned any of my men, the Indians would see right through me. Before they went on the war path, the Indians used to come to Fort Brace often. They know all of my men. I haven't got an officer I can send. But I have plenty of uniforms. I might have one that would fit you. Well, it might fit me, Colonel, but I'm afraid I wouldn't fit it. See, I didn't get any higher than Sergeant Major. Mr. Faber here was a captain in the Confederate Army. Well, I don't intend to enlist. Well, it would only be temporary. I'd commission you for this one particular mission. Nolan could act as a scout to go along with you. Well, if I did go with Pete, wouldn't take an Ogala back, ensure an Indian attack? I've sent for Ogala. Come in. Here's the prisoner, sir.
Ogala, your people have captured six of my men. They have offered me those men in exchange for you. What do you want of me? If I send you back to your tribe, what will you tell them? I can tell them that Fort is strong. That there are many more soldiers than were here before. That to attack would be hopeless. Knowing all that to be a lie? They would not listen before. Now that I have been inside Fort, maybe they believe me. I have your word that you will say exactly that? I do not do this for you. I do not do this because you are right and I am wrong. The land we live on is ours. The life we live is life we have always lived. But my people are in narrow canyon and waters rise swiftly. There is only one way out of canyon. Your way. I accept, but I do not pretend to like. Well? Well, uh, well, are you sure you got a uniform that would fit me? By the authority vested in me, I commission you a captain in A Company of the 5th Cavalry of the United States Army. By the authority vested in me, I hereby appoint you an Army Scout attached to the 5th Cavalry of the United States Army. Captain Faber, you will escort Chief Agala to his tribe at Snake Canyon. There you will exchange him for a six-man patrol consisting of Henderson, Rutledge, Baines, Cochran, Marshall, and Walsh. What about uh, Rutledge, Cochran, and Marshall who served under me in the Confederate Army? Any one of them hates me enough to kill me. I have yet to see a soldier who doesn't hate a good officer, Captain. You have your orders. Yes, sir. Good luck. Dozen men could hold this against an army. We have held it against an army. It is good to be back. My son, Nakoma. Wait for me, my son. An agreement has been made. Bring the soldiers and their horses. I not remember you. Or you. You have never seen us. I have seen all men of Colonel Hiller's command. Or you thought you did. The men are unharmed. Glad to see that. Six brave men, all captured while on duty. Marshal. Yeah. Are my eyes playing tricks on me, or is that favor? That's Captain Favor. I remember him. Are you what? He's the one who brought you back the first time, wasn't he? Well, what difference does it make who he is? He ain't taking me back. Colonel Hiller made a trade. Ogulla for the six of you. Colonel Hiller's a good man. Shut up, Baines. I ain't at all sure just how good a trade it is. Well, why don't you call it off? The trade's made, Captain. We have to stand around here. Give them their horses. And they were armed when they were captured. Give soldiers their weapons.
it is important you return safely to fort so that the commander will know the Pawnee keep their word. All of you must return safely. Makisu de Hata. Ayato to Amaru de Teha. <laughs> right out, Corporal. The rest of you follow. Yes, sir. Indians were laughing back there. Hmm. Seems we got ourselves a special kind of a patrol. What does that mean? They were deserting when the Indians caught them. A deserter's patrol. Well, that's what Ogala was trying to tell me when he said to make sure all the men get back to the fort. Yeah, but there's six of them and two of us. What are the odds? Oh, I wouldn't want to bet. Why'd you ask him? You know something? I bet if you and me was to make a break for it, him or that scout wouldn't be able to stop us. Walsh! Pete, get after him. The next man gets stopped with a bullet. Well, what makes you think there'll be anybody else, Captain? We're all here to get back to the port as soon as possible. Is that why you deserted? Mount the patrol, column of twos. Let's go. Patrol mount, column of twos. Patrol ho! <laughs> believe you. But hard to believe man who not hero take chance ride alone through Indian country. I wasn't going back to that trap. Why you speak of Fort as trap? Fort is well guarded. Fort has many soldiers, many bullets and rifles. Look, I, I don't like to be cooped up any place. Why you speak of stronghold as trap? Oh, oh that, well, I didn't mean nothing. I was just kidding, that's all. No, now wait. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to me? 
We find out if you are a hero. No, please. I got nothing against you people. What are you gonna do, please? I. All I want to do is get loose. I just didn't want to go back to the fort. I. I'm not gonna bother anybody, please. Please tear me loose. I'll just ride off. I won't bother anymore. Put it down. Water's got a license to get back to the fort. They're all dry between here and the fort. A good officer would have made sure we were carrying enough. Who was your officer when you left the fort? When we rode out of the fort, mister, we rode out of the army. This is the second time you've tried to desert, ain't it? Because Captain Favor hauled you back first time, too, didn't he? Yeah, he hauled me back first time, too. Now, you was lucky they didn't shoot you. Lucky? They should have shot me. And I wouldn't have had no more soldiering. I guess they didn't figure they could lose a rifle back then. Any more than they can now. Rutledge, you are in the army for keeps. That is, if Captain Favor has anything to say about it. Now, Captain Favor is going to keep you in the army for the rest of your life. Which ain't going to be very long once he gets you back. Now, there's your horse. Well, go on and try for it. Walsh made it. Go on. Rutledge, where are you going? Hey, you ain't taking me back. <laughs> What's the matter, Marshal? You don't look too happy. Is he a friend of yours? He no friend of mine. Well, go on, Rutledge. Was you helped jump him, you got the right to kill him. He was gonna take me back. You wanna make it that easy for him? I don't like you, Marshal. But this time, I think you're right. One quick bullet don't make up for three years. Three years you blocked my promotion. I never made nothing but corporal. It's all you was good for, taking orders, not giving them. How good would you be at taking orders? Now, we got to get out of this territory. Keep him alive until we leave. Gives him a chance to learn a thing or two before he dies. Let's go. And you, you ride at the head of the patrol where we can all keep an eye on you. Or maybe take a shot at your back. Yeah. <laughs> 
we agreed to let soldiers return to fort. This one not want to return. Did he want torture? It necessary. Many questions to answer. What questions? Why he run from safety of fort? Did he answer? He answer. Now a question for Ogala to answer. I am your chief, Kano. Still question. You say fort well guarded, well armed. This is what I said. You say so now? I have been here, Snake Canyon, since that time. I learned nothing new. Kano has. Tell Chief White Soldier. Many men at fort? No. Fort stand big battle? No. Not enough men. If, if the Indians attacked Fort, they will wipe us, wipe us out. He say no more. He say enough. Not enough men at Fort. Not enough arms. Soldiers expect help. But help not come for three daybreak. Help will come. We take fort by then. Did Ogala know this? I knew this. You are not chief of Pawnee, Ogala. I am chief until I die. Chief does not lie to his people. The chief of the Pawnee seek first safety for his people. This I have done. It is possible we could take fort. It would mean victory today. But today's victory would mean defeat tomorrow. We could have a hundred todays. And always there will be a tomorrow in which we must lose. I would like my son to be a man. I want to see all the children of the Pawnee men. I do not want them to die with bullets of the white man. Tacoma, you listen to words of chief. He has lied for your sake. The life he saved, is this life a Pawnee warrior? Ogala's son has spoken. Ogala is not chief of Pawnee. You are one that has betrayed us. Only one way for you to die. Hungry, Captain? I ask if he is hungry. No. You know, I didn't hear you say, sir. No, sir. Well, you go right ahead and starve yourself, Captain. Oh, I keep forgetting. You ain't a captain anymore. I'm the captain now. Yeah, I think I'll give myself a promotion. Uh, Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Cochran. Hey, you know, I like the sound of that. We made camp too early. We can't go tearing around these hills at night. We're liable to get lost. Yeah, and this way we might get picked up, too. Who's commanding this patrol? <laughs> you are. Don't you go forget it either. Hear me? Any of you? No one's forgetting it, Cochran. Yeah? Well, then, Henderson, you and Marshall tie him up. I don't want the captain getting restless during the night. Ten years. Ten years without purpose or meaning. First one army, then another. Now you ain't got no army at all. You asking why I deserted? Nope. I ain't interested. There was a court-martial you were interested in once. Mine. It broke me. You remember the charge? I remember. 
drunk on duty. You were drunk. The man I thought was a friend turned me in. The officer of the guard turned you in. An officer of the guard named Favor. What did you have done? I don't know. That's the only thing that keeps me from killing you. Now. No, not now. Or ever. Well, you'll have somebody like Cochran do it. Maybe Rutledge. Now, don't be too sure. Poor Rutledge. Always running away. And listen, just so he can run away. Most likely Cochran. Your commanding officer. As long as I want him to be. Sure. Don't it bother you none? Knowing one of us is gonna kill you? Yeah. Don't bother me. Much it seems to bother you, though. One. It's only a boy. Now just what do you think he'll grow up into? He's all alone, Cochran. What do you want? I want to speak with your captain. Well, you speak to me. I'm in charge here. I said I was in charge here. What difference does it make who he speaks to? Why is the captain tied? My father spoke of you. And who's your father? His name was Ogala. He was chief of the Pawnee. Was? He lied to his people. He did not want them to attack the fort. They killed him last night. You know why he lied? You think he was right? I do not know if he was right or if he was wrong. I know he was my father. The pony ride? They ride. Against the fort? Good luck to him. If we don't get out of here, we're going to get caught right in the middle. Looks like you haven't got any choice. We gotta run! I knew this was gonna happen. Come on, Rutledge! Get our saddles. Patrol, Tenshut! I ain't given my orders yet! Well, unless your orders are cut and ride, who needs them? Look, you put me in charge yourself. Well, we put you out of charge. I'm still in charge. You're still nothing. Look, if we stand around here talking all day, them Indians are going to grab us all over again. And this time, if they're planning to attack the fort, they ain't going to make no prisoners. There ain't a soldier among you. The only thing that makes a soldier different from a man with a gun, Cochran, is that he'll take orders. Not a soldier in sight. You're a corporal, Cochran. You was never anything else, and you will never be anything else. A soldier takes orders, an officer gives them. What are your orders, Cochran? Well, we... We gotta ride out of here. Where are you gonna go? Back down the road? I don't know. Up in the hills, maybe. Hills the Indians know better than you know the inside of the sutler's store, Henderson. All right. Then somebody come up with a better idea. You just came through these hills. You gotta lead us out of here. Now do like I say. Oh, what? You or the Pawnees. A few more minutes don't seem to make much difference. You gotta lead us out of here. Oh, God. I don't care what you are. Don't you want to live? Don't you? All right. Then you get it here. The rest of us can scatter and run. Smell of fear you're going to leave behind. And he's have no trouble at all tracking you down. Well, what would you do? What he's trying to say, Captain, is that you're the only man here any of us will take orders from. Captain? Sure. Captain, it don't make any difference with the Pawnee up there. Look, Captain Favor, will you please take command? Give me my gun.
I give the orders. No questions. No questions, sir. Corporal, saddle up the horses. Get your saddles. The Pawnee know about the reinforcements? They know. Will you ride with us? Your father died because he hoped for a friendship between his people and mine. I can't speak for anybody else, but I offer you that friendship. Is there any other way through to the fort? Around the hills. How long does that take? Two days' ride. Haines, take all the horses and pick them down that side of the ridge. Drove this mount. We're going to be fighting your people. You go on to the fort. party in front of us, the fort's behind us. If we're lucky, we might be able to beat the pony back to the fort. Then what are we stopping for here, Captain? Speak when you're spoken to. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. With the pony attacking in force, the fort wouldn't stand a chance without reinforcements. Reinforcements don't come up for two days. Captain, try to tell us something we don't know. I'm telling you, we're holding up the pony here for two days. Here? We didn't turn you loose so you could lead us into a trap. You turned me loose because there's nothing else you could do. We hold them up for two days, the fort's safe. So are we. If there's any of us still alive, Captain. Hey, Al, if anybody's still alive. Corporal, post some men. Yes, sir. Baines, take the right flank. I'll take the left. The rest of you down behind the lads. Cut! On the double. Let him have a drink. You know he won't stay alive long enough to finish what's left in that canteen. Why don't you shut up? None of you think you're gonna get out of here alive, do you? Cochran, I wouldn't send you on as bugler. I was gonna wait until we finish with those Indians. But I'm not gonna wait now. I'm gonna finish you with these. Rutledge. Chances. Marshal, you, you assign watches. Yes, sir. I wasn't letting any Indian cheat me out of killing you. I'll take the first watch. No sign of them yet. But then the Pawnee don't like to ride in the morning hours. They think the spirits of the dead ride in the morning mists before the sun rises. Well, why do we have to stay around here and wait for them? Because if you go off by yourself, you'll die by yourself. Here they come! Yeah! 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 
turn till they get halfway up the slope. It's got to pretty close. That close, you get more for your bullets. said his father was dead. Well, that was right, he is dead. I'm afraid his horse is going to go the wrong way. What, what gave you the idea to do this? The Pawnee believed in spirits riding at dawn. Thought I'd oblige him. Must have scared those Indians out of a year's growth. Gave us time. Maybe even brought peace. Couldn't stop him while he was alive, but his son's at the fort. Well, we better bury him here then. How's everything up there? Patrol held as long as necessary. I need him. Not only because he's a good scout, but he knows Indians better than any white man I've ever known. Right now, right here. He could mean the difference between peace and war. He's already got a job. Would you fire him if I ask you to? Pete? Yeah, boss, I'm ready. Nolan, you've done a great thing for the Army. That gives me the right to ask you to do even more. I swore you in for three days. I just told Mr. Favor I want to keep you on. Well, what did Mr. Favor say about that? It's your decision to make. Well, I got a job I like. I like the men I'm working with. Well, it's not too easy, but droving's a job you just don't ride away from and forget. You know what I mean, boss. I, I ain't asking to quit. I am. In a war, what a man wants isn't as important as how badly he's needed. There's no war. Only if men like you help, work with the Indians, bring about a better understanding between us. Well, I guess I could help a little like that, but... Well, I don't know what to do. Oh, I think you do. My father is dead. Who will speak to me in my own language? Haru, Haru, Hakoma. All right, Colonel. You got yourself a scout. Thank you. Both of you. Oh, uh, Pete, uh... If you ever have enough of the army, there's always a job waiting with us. Yeah, I'll remember that. Boss. Well, 
Tell Rowdy Wishbone the rest of them so long for me. Yeah, sure. See, one other thing. I promised Mush if I ever left the drive, he could have my spurs. You mind uh, taking them to him? Will do. Fall in! I'm not carrying a gun. You tell me what you're doing here, and it better make sense. I'm looking for a man by the name of Clay Forrester. I'm Clay Forrester. What do you want? You were a soldier stationed in the town of Dry Rock five years ago. That's right. You uh, testified at the trial of Buddy Randolph. Yeah, what about it? I got $200 for you. Two hundred. You got $200 for that bug-eared saddle tramp? Yeah, what did he do to earn it? He hasn't earned it yet. But he can earn it very quickly if he'll ride into Dry Rock with me. Dry Rock? Why? Who are you? Who sent you? No one you know. But she's real anxious to meet you. She'll pay $2,000 for the privilege. This is just the down payment. You want it or not? Well, yeah, I want it. As soon as I find out what I have to do to get it. Uh, Rowdy, you can spare me for a while, can't you? Yeah, but you uh, sure you're being smart? You could be risking your neck, you know. Well, up to now, my neck hasn't been even worth 50 cents. For $2,000, I'd risk everything that's hooked onto it. And that isn't very much. Right. Well, we'll be uh, staying over here a few days to wait for Mr. Favor. Be sure you're back when we leave. Well. Let's go, friend. You're sure he's the right man? Yes, Miss Ada. You must forgive me, Mr. Forrester, but I'm carrying rather a large sum of money. I can't afford to take chances. My name is Ada Randolph. I'm Buddy Randolph's mother. Well, last I heard of Buddy, he was still in prison. Five years, isn't it? My son died two weeks ago, Mr. Forrester. I brought him back here to have him buried. Here? Why? But he left a will, Mr. Forrester. And you are one of his heirs. Me? Oh, well, Ma'am, I was with the posse that hunted him down. I, well, it was my testimony that helped send him to prison. Why would he leave me anything? Let's say he was of a forgiven nature.
And now that you have arrived, all the rest of the people I have to see are right here in Dry Rock. Joshua, get the box. I gather you are familiar with this town, Mr. Forrester. Well, I was five years ago. Then perhaps you'd be good enough to see us to the bank. I wish to make a deposit. It's Clay Forrester. Hello, Floyd. Uh, we have some business with Mr. Emery. Sure thing, right this way. It's Clay Forrester, Mr. Emery. I know, I heard. Forrester, how are you? I'd like to have you meet Mrs. Randolph, Mr. Emery. Mrs. Randolph? Heard you were in town, saw the funeral. You know, folks is wondering why you brought your son back here to be buried, instead of taking him home where he was born. Let's say somehow it seemed more appropriate to bring him back here, Mr. Emery. After all, he was well known here, wasn't he? Yes. I wish to open an account and deposit some money. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I want you to sit down, Mrs. Randolph. Thank you. You know, uh, it's been a long time since we uh, welcomed a new customer. Now, how large a sum did you wish to deposit? $300,000. Well, I'll just fill in the amount. Three hundred thousand? In cash. Show him, Joshua. You mean to say that you, you carried all that money with you? It was well hidden, Mr. Emery. Mrs. Randolph, have you any idea what people would do for a fortune like that? Nobody knew I had it. Besides, it's safe now. Can you handle it? Be glad to, ma'am. Floyd, come over here. Should be three hundred thousand dollars in this box. You check it and put it in the safe. And you double check him, Joshua. Now, uh, is this account to be opened in your name, ma'am? No, sir. The estate of Buddy Randolph. The estate of? You mean that money's his? That's right, Mr. Emery. That money is his. Oh. You uh, planning to settle in Dry Rock, ma'am? No, sir, I plan to be out of here in three or four days. Oh, then the deposit's only temporary. On the contrary, I have every hope that it'll be permanent. Yeah. I would appreciate it very much if you would call a meeting of the town council for this afternoon. I'll explain then why I've come here. Be glad to, ma'am. See, there's only three of us. That's uh, me, I'm the mayor, and uh, Judge Wainwright and Sheriff Jason. I would also appreciate having present at that meeting the five witnesses who testified against my son at his trial. Well, that should be easy. Let me see, there's uh, Clay here, me, Matella, Floyd, Town Barber, Bix Thompson, and uh, Honey Lassiter. Honey, is she still in town? Same old place. Shall we say three o'clock this afternoon? Very good, ma'am. We usually have our meetings in Judge Wainwright's chambers. That's uh, the courthouse building just across from the hotel. I'll be there. And now, Mr. Forrester, Joshua will see me back to the hotel. Bye, ma'am. Forrester? Well, Sheriff, hello. I heard you was back in town. I hoped it wasn't true. Uh, let's see, how many times was it you locked me up in that jail of yours? Just as many times as you and your friends got to feeling too good and started shooting up the town. No, oh, we were soldiers, Sheriff. We had to let off steam somehow. And somehow I had to maintain law and order. I'm warning you, Forrester. I'll still lock up a man if he breaks the law. By the way, what's your business in Dry Rock? Whatever it is, it's my business. Remembering you, it's not likely to stay that way for long. Are you paid to take care of trouble, Sheriff? Or are you itching to start some? I see you haven't changed any, Forrester.
How about uh, some service, honey? Just a minute. Clay. Clay Forrester. Well, I was hoping you hadn't forgotten me. Oh, well, it's so good to see you again. So long since we've had a stranger in town. How you been, honey? Oh, I'm, I'm like this town. I don't improve with age. You're wrong. You look better than ever. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't tell you this, Clay. But when the army moved you away from here, I cried for two whole days. Well, I can't say I blame you. I always did leave a trail of broken hearts behind me. <laughs> Same old Clay. I'll bet you can still charm a gopher into eating cactus. Well, that depends on the gopher. Well, how come you're still in town, honey? I figured you'd left years ago. That's what you always wanted, wasn't it? Oh, it takes money to leave. Maybe I just stopped caring. After what happened with Buddy Randolph, and oh, then the mines closing down, the town going bust. Well, it was like everybody was in a big pit they just couldn't climb out of. Oh, but there must have been some way for you to leave. Well, I thought about it once, with Buddy. But you know what came of that. No, when I leave this town, I'm going with my head high. Not walking three paces behind some man who thinks he owns me. Oh, honey, you're telling that to the wrong man. I never promised you. Oh, I don't mean you, Clay. You never lied to me. I'm glad you've come back. You come alone? Yeah. Uh, Buddy Randolph's ma sent word she wanted to see me. What's she here for? Well, we'll find that out this afternoon. She wants us both at a town meeting at three. Oh, she does, does she? Well, I won't be there. Well, it could be important. What can you lose by coming? You know what I think of Buddy, and I got no love for any of his kin, either. Well, I figured there'd be no harm in hearing what she has to say. Besides, it'd be less boring with you sitting next to me. And after it's over, well, maybe we can go somewhere and sort of, well, get to know each other again. Mm-hmm. I was right. You can still charm a gopher into eating cactus. Well, she should be here any minute. Well, didn't she tell you anything further about why she wanted us to meet? Only what I told you, that's all. But I figure anyone who can deposit $300,000 in my bank is someone worth listening to. It's only one minute to three, Judge. Uh, Mrs. Randolph, may I present Miss Lassiter, Mr. Forrester, you already know, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Peters, you already know. Judge Wainwright. Good morning. And uh, Sheriff Jason. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Randolph? Sheriff Jason. My son wrote to me about you. Ms. Randolph, I'm sorry to have to say this. But your son was a troublemaker. He got in one scrape after another. Let's say, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I shall try to be brief and to the point. This is my son's will. As you all know by now, he died in prison two weeks ago. What you may not know is that he was quite wealthy in his own right. He left an estate of $300,000, and he bequeathed that entire estate to your fair city, to the town of Dry Rock. I need hardly point out to you that that means more than $2,000 apiece for every man, woman, and child living here right now. Well, I don't understand, Mrs. Randolph. Why would your son leave anything to this town? Because he had faith in it, Your Honor. Faith in its devotion to justice. Faith in its willingness to right a wrong. This $300,000, ma'am, did he uh, leave it to the town outright? No strings attached? Not quite, Mr. Forrester. There are two conditions. First, that my son's name be cleared because he was innocent of any wrongdoing. Second, that the man who hounded and persecuted him, Sheriff Jason here, be expelled from this town and his property acquired as a final resting place for my son's remains and that a fitting memorial be established to his memory. <laughs> you find this amusing, Miss Lassiter? No, Mrs. Randolph, I don't. Quite frankly, it turns my stomach. I take it, Judge Wainwright, it would not be impossible to reopen my son's case? Not impossible, Mrs. Randolph, but very difficult. There would have to be substantial new evidence introduced. Or perhaps a change of testimony by the witnesses. Well, we told the truth, ma'am. There'd be no reason to change our testimony. What happens to the money, ma'am, uh, if these two conditions aren't met? The money will be used to build a memorial somewhere else. Somewhere where justice is held in higher esteem. Justice, Mrs. Randolph? 
I don't know what your son told you, but would you like to know what he did in Dry Rock five years ago? Would you really like to know the truth? Your version of the truth, Sheriff? Yes. Your son broke into Mr. Emery's bank with a gun in his hand, while Clay Forrester and another soldier were depositing an army payroll. He gunned down the other soldier and got away with the money. Mr. Emery, Mr. Peters, and Mr. Thompson were all in the bank at the time. They rode with me in the posse that tracked down your son. And what's more, Mrs. Randolph, he told Miss Lassiter what he planned to do before he did it. Now, that's the truth. Now, would you like to hear what really happened? My son told me, and my son wouldn't lie, not to me. Somebody else stole that money. Somebody else killed that soldier. My son found the money where it was hidden, and he was in the very act of returning it to you when you apprehended him. Mrs. Randolph, why are you doing this? You don't really believe what you've just told us. Why would my son rob a bank, Miss Lassiter? He had all the money he needed at home. You didn't know your son very well, did you? I did not come here to discuss my son with any... I came here to discuss his will. You mean you came here to bribe us, don't you? Well, my testimony is not for sale, Mrs. Randolph. I told the truth. Your son was as guilty as sin, and nothing can ever change that. I think Miss Laster spoke for all of us, Mrs. Randolph. We're decent and honorable people in this town, and we testified to the truth. Am I to take it, then, that you are turning down my son's bequest? Yes, ma'am. Well, let's say that's your privilege. But I would ask you to consider that perhaps the decision is not yours alone to make. There are a hundred other people in this town. Do you have a right to deprive them of $2,000 apiece without even asking them? I don't think they'd take to that very kindly, Mr. Emery, especially when the money would do so much for them. Pay their debts, put this town back on its feet, buy new machinery, equipment, reopen the mines, make your bank solvent again. Think about it, dear people. Think about it real hard. I'll be in the hotel in case any of you wants to discuss it further. Honey's right. It's a bribe and nothing else. Yeah, the old lady does have a point, though, Sheriff. Folks in town ain't gonna like it. One bit. You know, there ain't no place a man can hurt much worse than in his pocketbook. Come in. Mrs. Randolph? Where? Mr. Forrester. Have you searched your memory and decided you were mistaken in your testimony against my son? Well, that's what I came to talk to you about, ma'am. I don't rightly see how I could square it with my conscience. Let's get this one thing straight, Mr. Forrester. I'm offering no bribe. If you change your testimony, it'll be because you believe my son is innocent. How can I believe he's innocent? I saw him rob that bank. You saw a boy who looked like my son, who sounded like my son, but who was not my son. Now, that's possible, isn't it? Well, I always say anything's possible. But to get back to my conscience, that soldier who was killed by your son, by the boy who looked like your son. Well, he was in my outfit, I'd feel like I was betraying him. My son left a bequest to that soldier's family of $4,000. Does that help clear your conscience? I guess it does, ma'am. But the others may not feel as clear about it as I do. Uh, Bex Thompson and Mr. Emery, Floyd Peters, eh? They're pretty stubborn about what they think's right. And that honey Lassiter, well, you saw how she felt. I think it's going to take a lot of heavy persuading to bring these people around. I'm well aware of that. I was rather hoping that you might be able to help persuade them. Me, ma'am? There'd be a bonus of an extra thousand dollars in it for you. Or maybe you don't think you can persuade them. Well, some people think I can talk a gopher into eating cactus. I can believe that, too. Which of the four are you going to start with? Oh, uh, well, none of them. Yet. 
The first thing to do is to let the town know that money's waiting for them at the bank. After that, I, I think they'll do most of the work for us. I like you, Mr. Forrester. Let's say you understand me very well. Mrs. Beamish, oh, you're looking so young and pretty, I hardly recognize you. Why, Clay Forrester, I do declare. Well, what brings you back to Dry Rock? Well, I want my share of the money, just like everybody else. What money? Well, the $300,000 that Buddy Randolph left this town in his. You mean, Mr. Emery hasn't said anything about it? No, I... Oh, I've let the cat out of the bag when I shouldn't have. Look, Mrs. Beamish. I want your solemn promise not to tell a living soul what I just said. Oh, Clay, why, you know you can count on me. Thank you, ma'am. I, I sure hope so. Forrester. I want to talk to you. Well, what's on your mind, Sheriff? The whole town knows about that money. I check with all the rest. They haven't said a word. That leaves you. Why, Sheriff, you must have known that story would get out sooner or later. What with Mrs. Randolph in town? Well, people bound to ask questions. So you're the boy with all the answers, aren't you? You want to lock me up for it? I wish I could. But unfortunately, there's no law against corrupting decent people. I can't move until the law has been broken. I'm pretty good about not breaking it. You taught me how to be, Sheriff. What'd you do that for? Do what? Throw that rock. Did you hear that, boys? Somebody threw a rock at poor Floyd. <laughs> I just knew there'd be trouble. With you not giving the town its money, Floyd? It ain't mine to give. There's my glasses. Your glasses? Why, there they are. Now, ain't that a shame? Smash to smithereens. Hey, uh, what goes on here? Why, somebody threw rock at poor Floyd here. I wouldn't be surprised if there was more rocks. This town being riled up the way it is. All right, you've had your say, boys. Now get. Now look here, Mr. Forrester. You was one of the old dots yourself. I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't a couple of heads cracked open the way I'm riled up. Now, get! Thanks, Clay. Uh, you got another pair? Yeah, in the bank. Uh, I don't know what got into them. I ain't done no harm to any of them. Floyd, I was talking to Bix Thompson. You know what he came up with? Maybe we was wrong about Buddy Randolph. Maybe, uh... Maybe it was a dead ringer for him we saw rob that bank. Do you think that could be possible? Yeah, I guess it could be possible. Good. Oh. Good morning, Ms. Randolph. Mr. Forrester? Seems to be a bit of trouble at the bank. So that does. I guess I'd better look into it. Bank will be open later. I'm telling you for the last time, get back to your homes and your work where you belong. What about our money? He's got $2,000 of my money in there. When do I get it? The only money you've got in there, man, is what you have on deposit, and that ain't much. He's only one man. We got a right to take what's ours. 
That's right. Let's get it. Now, I'm warning you. I'm ready to use this. Now, get moving. The bank will be open for business in an hour. Ain't over yet, Sheriff. Not by a long shot. Thank you, Sam. Having trouble, Sheriff? You're doing a good job, Forster. You have to forget about Honey Lassiter, ma'am. Just settle for the other four of us. No, sir. I want all five. But why? Four of us can swing it? Let's say I consider Miss Lassiter's testimony as important as anybody else's. Many ways more so. You really want to see her crawl, don't you? I don't think Honey's for sale. That's foolish thinking. Everybody has a price. It's just a question of finding out how high it is. Well, honey's price would be high. A lot higher than $2,000. Then go higher. I'd need at least 10000 in cash. I rather thought you might. Let's just call this cactus for the gopher, shall we, Mr. Forrester? My regards to Miss Lassiter. I'd almost forgotten what it's like, Clay, caring for someone. Well, don't you ever forget, honey, not for a minute. In a way, though, I... I wish you'd never come back. Well, why not? Oh, because I could stay in this godforsaken town. As long as nothing was happening here, and as long as I wasn't hoping or caring or feeling alive. Honey, why don't you leave? You know why. Money? It'd take a lot more than money. What are you trying to say? Honey, you and me, we uh, hit it off pretty good together, huh? Now, if we was to cut out of here, we could have one whale of a time. Now, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Sure, I'd like that. But living it up that way, it costs a lot of money. A big bundle, and we don't have it. Ah, uh, yes, but uh, we do. $10,000. Where'd you get that? Oh, it's not mine, it's yours. Mine? Uh, the old lady, she told me to give it to you. She, um... Feels pretty badly about the way Buddy treated you, and she, well, she sort of hopes that this will make you feel a little more kindly toward him. Ten thousand dollars. Well, I, I, I see what you mean, Clay. With this ten thousand of mine and the two thousand you'll be getting, why, you will be taking your share. Well, the whole town is, honey. There's no point in being the only holdout. No, no. Well, now, that'd give us $12,000. Sure could do a lot with that. Mm, yes, we could. All right, Clay, you can tell her she's won. Now, what are you talking about, honey? You can tell Ada Randolph that the bribe worked. Her precious son is innocent. The last witness has agreed to perjure herself. Now, wait a minute, honey. Oh, and don't think I won't use this money. I'll use it to take me just as far away as I can get from this town and from you. How much extra did she pay you for this job, Clay? Amanda? Oh, yes, Sam? What's going on around here? Somebody giving a party or something? 
Oh, no. Uh, we're just stocking up on clothes and supplies we've been needing for a long time. <laughs> clothes and supplies takes money. Where'd it come from? Oh, we ain't paying cash for it. Uh, we're buying on credit. All we've got to do is sign a note. Oh, well, who's backing your notes? Why, George Emery, down at the bank, of course. Well, how much? Up to $2,000 a piece. Clay Forrester. Know where I might find him? Sure. The courthouse across the street. Whole town's there. Courthouse? I might have known he'd be in trouble. Thanks. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Sit down, please. Now, Miss Lassiter, you've heard the testimony of the other four witnesses. It seems that their eyes were playing them false five years ago. It wasn't Buddy Randolph they saw hold up the bank and shoot that soldier. Oh, no, it was, as they so colorfully put it, a dead ringer for him. Now, it was your testimony at that time, Miss Lassiter, that Buddy Randolph confided his plans to you in advance and asked your help. Are you about to tell us that it wasn't Buddy Randolph at all, but a dead ringer for him? No, Your Honor. Good. And what is this new testimony you wish to offer? I told the truth, Your Honor. But not the whole truth. Well, what is the whole truth? Well, when... when Buddy said what he did about holding up the bank... he was only fun and he didn't mean it. And, and then when I found out that he didn't care for me as much as he pretended, well... I, I guess I wanted to get even. But he was only fun in your honor. I see. A bank is robbed, a man is killed, and Buddy Randolph is only fun. In. That is all, Miss Lassiter. In view of the new testimony that has been offered at this hearing by Mr. Forrester and the others, I have no choice but to reverse my verdict of five years ago. I find Buddy Randolph innocent of the crimes of which he was accused and declare that they were committed by a person or persons unknown. Court is adjourned. Ma'am. Folks was uh, kind of wondering, ma'am, when you'd be releasing the money to him. I'll release the money the moment that the second condition of my son's will is fulfilled. I trust you all haven't forgotten about that. I'm most anxious to start building the memorial to my son on Sheriff Jason's property, just as soon as he finds it convenient to relinquish it. Sam, some of us been talking it over, and we figured if we was to throw in an extra 5,000, now that's more than twice what your land's worth. Add that to your 2,000 share of Buddy's money, and you'll be leaving with a nice profit. George, I'm not leaving. And I'm not taking any part of that bribe money. Now, maybe I can't stop you people from listening to Forrester's weasel tongue, but I've never run out of my job before, and I'm not running out now. Uh, hello, Wes. What are you doing in town? Well, uh, we're leaving tomorrow, and I had a few things to get. Besides, Mr. Fable wanted to know if you're coming back. After what I've just seen, I guess I know the answer to that. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, you're playing for big stakes here. 
You got no use for Drover's wages. And I kind of think Drover's got no use for you. Get out of my way, Jed. You don't seem to understand. You ain't welcome around here no more. So we're gonna try another way to make you understand. But first we're gonna pull your teeth. that gun. This ain't your fight, mister. You just better get moving before I forget I'm a peace-loving man. You know what's good for you. You get out of town fast. Much obliged to you. Like he said, was your fight? Well, maybe not, but I know whose fight it should have been. Is that the way you planned it? No, oh, this isn't any of my doing. Isn't it? You set him up for it. Look, Wish, you don't understand. Everything I've done for this town, I've done for their own good. I'm trying to make them all rich. Them or you? If that sheriff hadn't been so mule-headed, nobody would have gotten hurt. And he'd have cleared out of here with a big profit. Well, maybe there isn't a profit big enough to pay for what you want him to sell. But I guess you wouldn't understand that. I told you I never meant for it to turn out like this. Would you believe me? No, Clay, I wouldn't believe a thing you said. I never figured they'd try to kill a man. Men like you never figure ahead. If only there was a way to stop this before it's too late. Maybe there is a way to stop it. How? The old lady. Still her money. She hasn't released it yet. All we have to do is get her to call the whole thing off. She'd never do it. She might if I talk to her. It takes a woman to understand a woman and... Maybe I understand Ada Randolph a lot better than you think. All right, let's go. May I have my bag? I'll be back in a minute, Barney. I am accustomed to having visitors knock before they enter my room, Mr. Forrester. We're in kind of a hurry, ma'am. So am I. As you can see, I expect my business here to be concluded any time now. That's what I came to talk to you about. Our deal's off. We want you to take your money and get out of town now. I made an agreement, Mr. Forrester. I intend to live up to it. Was getting the sheriff killed part of that agreement? What brings you here, Miss Lassiter? Or wasn't the 10,000 enough? No. No, Mrs. Randolph, it wasn't enough. In fact, the whole 300,000 wouldn't have been enough. That's too bad. And you worked so hard for it. Yes, I earned it all right. I ate dirt just like all the others. I asked you once before, why is it so important for you to bring this town to its knees? I can't see that that's any of your concern, but I was here to clear my son's name. That's not the real reason. Mrs. Randolph, why did Buddy run away from home? By what right do you say such a thing? I have every right. Like I told you, me and Buddy were real close once. Might even say we were in love. 
he talked to me about how good it was to find a woman who didn't want nothing from him. Who wasn't riding herd on him all the time. Driving him, trying to make him what she wanted to be instead of what he wanted to be. How good it was to find someone who didn't remind him of his ma. You're a liar. He was my son and he loved me. He hated you, Mrs. Randolph. With every breath he took. That's what's been eating you alive, isn't it? That's what brought you back here with all that money. You made Buddy what he was, and whatever he did, you were part to blame. So now the only way you can live with yourself is by wrecking the town that brought him to justice. And that's the truth, isn't it? Don't you see, Clay? It wasn't Buddy's good name that she came out here to clear. It was her own conscience. I didn't know, ma'am. I was beginning to hate you. And I guess I just feel sorry for you now. Don't feel sorry for me, Mr. Forrester. Because I've won. You feel sorry for them. That's a mob. And they're ready to move. And there's nothing uglier than a mob on a move. It can't be stopped. You tell Mr. Emery I'll be at the bank when they return and they can have their money then. Maybe they won't want it then, ma'am. You really think you can stop all of those people? I can try, ma'am. I sure can try. I suppose you know half the town's headed this way. I know. If they mean business, they're going to run you out. Then why are you here? Well, I figured maybe they'd think twice facing up to three of us instead of just one. If you want to stay, you'll have to take off that gun belt. Take it off? That's right. If there's any blood to be spilled, it'll be them, not us. He's right, Clay. Well, why aren't you back there with your mom? You let them this far, why not all the way? Maybe I don't like the direction they're traveling. Well, are you three just gonna stand there all alone without guns? Well, you're fools if you do. to speak for the town. Now, you leave quiet, and there'll be no trouble. You people are trespassing on private property. I must ask you to leave. He's asking us to leave. Come on, let's get it over with. Now, hold on. What kind of cowards are you? A whole town against one man? All right, Chris, this is my fight. I started all this. I got a right to be hurt. Now, I talked all of you into going along with what the old lady wanted. Well, I was wrong. You through talking, Forrester? No, I ain't. I lied to Judge Wainwright about Buddy Randolph. We all lied. You know we all lied. You've had your says. Now we're asking you for the last time, Sheriff. You gonna leave? This is my home, Jed. I stay. Next time I'll be aiming better. Hold it! I don't know how far you're willing to go to get this money, but I aim to find out right now. Now you're gonna have to kill me before you put another bullet in him. Is it worth that much to you? Two murders on your conscience? And because he happens to be a friend of mine, you shoot him, you'll have to shoot me. All right, the price is going up. Three murders now. Four. We ain't gonna be talked out of it. We'll kill whoever we have to kill. One of you are all four. Better make that five, Jed. Six, Jed. Well, how about it? How far are you willing to go? How many people are you willing to kill? 10, 20, 40? Because sooner or later, you're going to wind up killing each other just to collect a bribe. It's our money. No! Now, listen. This has gone far enough. What's happening to us? We never had much. But at least we had our self-respect. But now we're turning into murderers. Just to collect a bribe? Well, not me.
that, uh, that wound needs care. Sure. It don't hurt one bit, Forrester. Not one little bit. Some things money can't buy, man. Joshua. Will I be seeing you the next time I pass through? I won't be here the next time you pass through. You're leaving? But you've got no money. Maybe I found out that money isn't that important. Next time a coach passes through, you get your test up ticket on it, will you? Oh, it's clean. It's uh, my own. Yeah, thought you'd come to town to collect some money, not give it away. I don't need any money. I'm figuring on dying young from eating that cooking of yours for the next three months. Get up. Colonel Agee. What do you want? I'm Hank Higgins, Colonel's foreman. Oh, I'm Roddy Yates. I'm with the favor outfit. We got uh, 300 head of cattle back here the Colonel contracted for in Waco. We're here to deliver and collect. Colonel didn't tell me anything about them. But I guess with all the excitement, getting married and leaving, he just forgot. You mean he ain't here? He's on his honeymoon. The girl's young enough to be his daughter. But that's none of my business. When's he going to be back? No telling. He wanted first to show off his bride to his folks over in Elkville. Then he's going to Indian Springs uh, for them mineral baths there. Hey, well, look, uh, Higgins, uh, if I give you this uh, receipt, you can sign for delivery, can't you? Sure. But I ain't got no authority to hand over any cash. Look, if one of us uh, uh, were to ride into this Indian Springs uh, with this receipt all signed by you, he'd pay up, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. Listen, I'd be glad to handle that for you. Oh, I'm sure you would. But when it comes to money, I'm the only one can be trusted. Yeah, you are the only one that can be trusted, with the cooking. Now, if Favor were here, I'm sure you'd agree with me that I'm the logical one to go. Look, when Mr. Favor isn't here, I'm boss of this outfit, and me being boss of this outfit, I'm gonna pick the man who goes. And I'm picking me. All right, come on, Clay. The sooner we get back, the sooner we can get to work. Trying to help you out. 
Well, come out where I can see you. And no monkey business. I don't know what's going on, but if I don't get you out of there, those horses are going to founder. Who are you? Just with the trail herd, back up the way. Well, what are you doing around here? Well, in the Indian Springs to meet somebody, that's all. Well, all right. Come on. I'm Mrs. Abigail Briggs. My name's Roddy Yates. Look, uh, Mrs. Briggs, are uh, you mad at me or the world, or what is it? Thieves. Helpless old lady that I am, they were trying to rob me. Oh, well, uh, I'm not too helpless. Anyway, you don't have to worry about that anymore. I hope not. I'll get these horses out here for you. <laughs> <sighs> I thank you, I do indeed, Mr. Yates. Now that I can look at you, it's plain you could never be one of those bandits. Oh, uh, thank you, ma'am. You know, you sure got a lot of spunk riding out here all by yourself. Whereabouts are you headed? Indian Springs, like you. I'm taking the stage east from there. My daughter and grandchildren live in St. Louis. Oh, no kidding. Well, you know, I think I better uh, ride along with you just to make sure you get there all right. Now, you're a dear boy, but... Now, that won't be necessary. Easy there. Easy, easy. Uh, you're gonna need a firm hand on those reins. I, I was driving horses before you were born, Mr. Yates. How about starting out by calling me Rowdy, huh? I can see you're almost as stubborn as I am. <laughs> Come on, you broomtails. <laughs> You're anxious to be on your way. Sure, sure. Just go off and leave a little old lady to be bushwhacked. <laughs> Tell me, has that daughter of yours got your kind of gumption? I don't know. She wasn't more than a baby when I sent her east. Frontier life's too hard on a delicate child. Well, I bet you'd be glad to see you, though, after all these oh, years. Huh? I hope so. My knitting needle. Get it? Oh, I won't be able to get another till I get back east. I'm just lost without my... Nitten. Oh, oh bless you, son. Now, you got a sample of what a nuisance old age is. An old lady can be an awful burden. Unless she's rich. Thank goodness I got enough to be real welcome. I got all my life savings in here. I aim to be a regular fairy grandma to her kids. Well, I'll bet you'd be welcome anyway. Oh, that's easy to say, Rowdy. But old folks and children are fine when they're with strangers. It's only when you're home you get scolded. Well, well, I guess I was lucky. I never had too much of a home life. Like my poor boy. Oh, you had a boy, too? I didn't know. Well, what, uh, whereabouts is he now? He was shot. Accidentally. Oh. Would you like to see his picture? Well, uh... That's him. Had your color hair, too. Yeah. Sort of brown and... Your hat. When did that happen? I don't... Gee, I don't know. It wasn't in there before. Hmm. She came closer than we thought. I only meant to scare you. You did. Oh, please, Rowdy. I don't even want to think about it. I'll buy you a new hat when we get to the spring. You save your money. This hat's going to be able to last me a long time. Then I'll knit you a scarf. Well, all right, if you'd like that. 
It's those bandits. Here, you let me handle this. Get the wagon over in the tree, will you? That's the carriage, all right. Can you imagine a little old lady stealing a thing like that? Yeah, you can bet she didn't do it all alone. Yeah, that partner of hers is a mighty good shot. Yeah. Did you get a good look at them? Uh, they hold up pretty tight. Good. Now, I don't want you getting hurt on count of me. You've done enough. Look, uh, they might not give up too easy, you know, Grandma. Why don't we take your horse and ride the trail to Indian Springs? It'd be faster, and we'll lose them. You mean you and me ride double? I'm light. Yeah, well, what about the carriage here and all the baggage? Oh, it's only rented. We'll use it for bait. I'll be taking the stage anyhow. Grandma, you sure got a head on your shoulders, you know? Old dogs like me don't need no tricks. We learned them all years ago. Now, send the horses back the way we came. All right. Here, they're doubling back. Come on. Excellent work, Sheriff. My wife and I are exceedingly grateful. I'm well, right sorry those horse thieves delayed your honeymoon, Colonel Ager. Thieves, did you say? Yes, sir. The old lady had a young fellow with her. He was riding a blaze faced sorrel horse. And he was a lot of trouble, too. Well, you deserve a reward. Oh, Colonel! Colonel! Please, dear, it, it's Horatio. We're married now. But Horatio, my jewels are gone. My beautiful diamonds, my pearls. What? And you let those scoundrels escape? Well, well, you didn't say nothing about jewels, Colonel. If you had thought less about your skin and more about your duty, this never would have happened. Oh, but, Colonel, I... I prefer my wife's jewels to your miserable excuses, sir. Well, well, we'll do the best we can, sir. But those thieves could be anywhere by now. Well, at least you know where we'll be. When you have something to report, contact us at the Wayside Hotel, Indian Springs. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, dear. Scenery around here. I can see you had enough of an old lady's company. I'll just see about my stage. Oh, I'll check on it for you. I gotta see about Colonel Agee anyway. Agee? Yeah, he's the man I'm supposed to meet about payment on some cattle. Yes, sir. My dear service? Yes, yeah, Colonel Agee in? The newlyweds. Yeah. Oh, dear. Wait a minute, Grandma. We gotta check on the stage now. No, they've been delayed, but we're holding the bridal suite for them. Oh, good. Oh, I'll wait. See, I got plenty of time. Well, I wish I could say the same. Now, when's the next stage for St. Louis? On Thursday. But that's two days. Well, see, now you got plenty of time, too, Grandma. You can relax. Relax? How can I relax? I mean, with all my savings here. You know, they were almost stolen from me once. Well, he's got a fine-looking strong box right there. Yes, that's right, ma'am. And it's for the convenience of our guests. Now, what's this for? That's to list the value and description of what goes in our safe. It's for your own protection. I'll do no such thing. I'd rather have my valuables in my room where I could keep an eye on them. But, madam... Oh, come on, Grandma, you're just being stubborn. I can't help it. I just don't like putting my money in that cracker box. You realize we can't be responsible for uh, valuables left in the rooms. That's right, Grandma. There's liable to be some thieves around. You get your whole life savings right in there. I can handle them. 
Well, you better give me a room close by so I can keep an eye on her. How about rooms with a connecting door? Rowdy, a hotel isn't like being all alone on the trail. Oh, Grandma, sometimes it can be a lot worse. Here you are, sir. 22 and 24, right at the top of the stairs. A sign right here, please, sir. Get a little set in their ways now. Oh, yes, yes, we get all kinds. Thank you, sir. So long, Grandma. You'd think I was a child. This uh, this will be your room, Grandma. I guess I'm over here. How about this one? I better make sure that's locked. up good and tight. Well, well, I got you taken care of. I guess I'll go wash up. You do that. I'm just fine. Rowdy! What are you up to, mister? I'd like to ask you the same thing. What? What were you doing trying to break into my room? What are you talking about, your room? That's right, my room. Now, you tell me what you were doing before I call the manager. i just worried about somebody breaking in here, that's all. I'm Otis Ames, Western representative of the Cutler Harness Company, and I don't like being called a thief. Neither do we, my good man. Yeah, I had to throw you out that window. Don't you dare. I'm armed. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> oh, you sure had him scared. I don't think he'll be bothering you much, Grandma. Neither do I. Now, Rowdy, you go on. I'm sure you got better things to do than stay here and listen to me snore. All right, Grandma, I wouldn't mind... Uh... Looking around town a little. at most now. Yep, in two hours you can be in Juniper Junction. Now you're sure there's a St. Louis stage out of there in the morning? I'm certain. You can just leave the carriage and my man will pick it up. Of course, there'll, there'll be a little extra charge. Grandma. Rowdy. Just what are you up to? You know I'm in a hurry to get home and there's a stage out of Juniper Junction. I now, thought... Now, Grandma, you know all the trouble you've had traveling alone. Cancel this carriage, uh, will you, mister? Rowdy. Now, Grandma, you're going to take the stage from Indian Springs right here, which is nicely guarded, and I won't have to worry about you. Now, Rowdy, you didn't come here to be nursemaid to a little old lady. Well, you don't hear me complaining now, do you? You're not fooling me. I was young once myself. You know, I, I should have known you didn't want to be cooped up in that stuffy old room. It's all right. Without even a meal, too. I bet you haven't eaten all day. I'm not hungry. Absolutely starved, I'll bet. I'm going to do something about that right now. And here's your corn on the cob. What do you take me for, Rowdy? A steer? <laughs> I couldn't possibly eat all this. Isn't he having anything? Oh, Rowdy, it's a shame to waste it. Especially at these prices. Well, I can pay for it. What's your name, dear? Jane. 
All Jane means is that you should try a bite, just to help me out. I'll go get another plate. Now, hey, look, Grandma, you're the one that's hungry. Just a taste to make me happy. Huh? Well, if it'll make you happy. Oh, would you care for anything else, Grandma? Not a thing. In fact, after a meal like that, it's a wonder I can keep my eyes open. <laughs> I'm going upstairs. Funny. All I did was help out a little, and I feel a little sleepy myself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the company. Now, if you were out with a nice girl like Jane here... What are you trying to do, get rid of me? Thank you, Mrs. Briggs. But if I had a grandma as nice as you, I wouldn't trade places either. Oh. Excuse me. Now, if you keep this up, I'm going to start thinking I'm your grandma myself. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. Now, look, Rowdy. You've done your duty. Your conscience is clear. Now, it's high time you went into the casino and started enjoying yourself. Play some poker. We'll get drunk. Have some fun. Hey, how about that? <laughs> What's so amusing? Check that table there. It's our friend Ames. My. Now, isn't he the lucky one? Yep. You know, if it wasn't for you, Grandma, I'd be in that game right now. Probably losing my shirt. All righty. Roddy, wait a minute. Maybe I'm not so sleepy as I thought. I think I'd like a little brandy. Brandy? Oh, doctors say it's a tonic for old folks. Very relaxing. Well, okay, I'll, I'll get you some. Well, wait just a minute, Grandma. I, I ain't gonna take you in no saloon here. Why not? Ladies are allowed, if escorted. Thank you kindly. Hey, how about giving Lydia a seat, huh? Thank you. Yeah, What'll it be, sir? A couple of brandies? That's right. No, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not much of a housekeeper, am I? Rowdy, uh... Invite that drummer to join us. We were sort of rude to him, weren't we? <laughs> All right. Make it three, will you? Hey, Ames? Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, what do you want? Mrs. Briggs over here would like to have you join us for a brandy, you know, so to straighten out the misunderstanding. Well, uh, come on. Oh, sure. Mr. Ames, I'm so sorry about what happened. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to forgive us. Well, now, it was just as much my fault as yours. Uh, here you are, sir. Now, I, I should take my medicine. For my heart, you know. We should all be as healthy. <laughs> Ouch! Mr. Ames, your watch. You were right, Rowdy. Hotels are a den of thieves. Oh, dear me. Well, those girls will steal practically anything. That's how I lost my first husband. Mrs. Briggs, I, I just can't thank you enough. Well, now that we're all friends at last, let's drink to it. What are you going to do, Ames? Go around all night with your hand on your wallet? Oh, no. These winnings are going into the hotel safe. Really? <laughs> I like to keep my valuables where I can see them. Uh, come on now, Grandma. It's true. You think that clerk would risk his neck if somebody put a gun in his back and told him to hand it over? It's not his money. That's right. Under the pillow. That's the safest place. Well, maybe that is the smartest thing at that, under the pillow. Yes, I think I'll... Oh, excuse me. Feeling sleepy, Mr. Ames? Well, maybe it's all this talk about pillows. 
It's catching. <laughs> Gracious. Well, Rowdy, we'll go along. I told you, Brandy was relaxing. <laughs> well, I might as well go along with you. The brandy's affecting me, too. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Ames. Good night, Mrs. Briggs. Not so fast, mister. That's the one, Sheriff. What is it with you, Ames, huh? Inviting me out for a drink when all the time you were setting me up. Go on, search him. Just a minute. Look, I don't know anything about this man's wallet, Sheriff. You can search me all you want. I ain't no crook. That's true, Sheriff. Every word of it. You know this woman, Mr. Ames? Yeah, she's a friend of his. And proud to be. This man's no thief. Have you ever seen a more honest face, Sheriff? I trust him with my life. I already have. Now, isn't that right, Rowdy? Mrs. Briggs, will you please keep out of this? If Rowdy's a thief, he'd have a lot easier time stealing from an old lady. And I wasn't robbed. That's right, Ames. You could have made a mistake. Well, he still acted mighty strange. And he knew about the money I'd won. You leaving town? No, I got business here. Well, let me know when you do. Come on, Ames. Let's go see what we can find out over at the hotel. All the nerve. I'm sorry I made up with him. It's a lucky thing you came along, Grandma. That sheriff's liable to have believed it. Sheriffs believe the worst about everybody. Now, you were going to leave town again, weren't you? Rowdy. The minute my back's turned, you were going to take off. A town like this isn't safe. Look at that drummer. Robbed twice. But I told you, you being on the trail alone isn't safe either. You should wait for the stage. And I told you I'm old enough to take care of myself. Now, if I you hired give, a You give me that. Rowdy, where are you going? I should have thought of this in the first place. Rowdy, now give it back to me. Now, look, Grandma, I'm going to put this in a place where neither one of us are going to have to worry about it. Not the bank. That's right. Now, you can get it out first thing in the morning before you take your stage. But, Rowdy... Now, Grandma, this isn't that tin box you were worried about. This is a bank with a safe made out of solid iron. Oh, dear. The doors are nearly a foot thick, Mrs. Briggs. Four teams had to freight this safe from the railhead. Mm. Satisfied now, Grandma? We trust it. There's a lot of gold and currency in there. So I see. I suppose you just lock it up at night and forget it. Well, we have a guard, too. Oh, Pop. Pop, meet Mrs. Briggs. Miss Briggs, ma'am. How do you do? Pop's been with us for years. But don't let that white hair fool you. He's the best shot in the territory. <laughs> you stay here all the time? I sleep here, ma'am. Poor dear. Don't you ever go out? Like for dinner? Uh, my daughter brings my supper from the hotel. She works there. Waits on tables. Now, that wouldn't be Jane, would it? 
I thought there was a resemblance. That's right. Oh, she's a lovely girl. You're feeling better now, I guess. Yes, yes, indeed. Now, just let me get my knitting. Now, you can put it away, Rowdy. Now, don't forget to shut this tight. <laughs> and, and lock it. <laughs> Uh, uh. There. However you do uh, it. Uh, Mrs. Briggs, you shouldn't have touched that. Oh, dear, really? Uh, don't be upset. It's supposed to be open during banking hours. I'm so sorry making you go to all this trouble. It'll only take a minute. At least I can see it's a good lock. The best. There we are. Well, i better get back to the hotel before I cause you any more trouble. Yeah, and Mr. Sims, uh, don't let her take that out until stage time tomorrow, will yeah, you? Yeah, I won't. Rowdy. How about you having dinner on me tonight? You mean you're asking me out? That's right. Maybe it's time I showed you my appreciation. Gee, I'd, I'd like that, Grandma. I really would. Good. Now, if you don't object, I'd like to go to my room. Yeah, I'd, you know, I still think you ought to try one of them their mud baths. You might be able to throw away that medicine for good. <laughs> You're a dear boy, Rowdy, but I don't believe all that Indian stuff. That might do you some good. All right, I will. If you will. If I would. I guess I asked for that. Except if any of our crew ever finds out, uh, my name's gonna be something worse than mud. belongings and put them where you can be sure and keep an eye on them. Now look, Mrs. Briggs. I've harnessed and unharnessed that horse too many times as it is. But if I leave early enough, he won't be around to stop me. Oh, all right. But I'm warning you, this is going to be the last time. Good, huh? And he had nothing better. Here's your pie, Rowdy. Get him a slice of cake, too, Jane. Yes. You sure you're going to be able to pay for all this? Do I look worried? You know, last night I was just helping out, Grandma. I think Jane understands. She's practically giving you half the cake. She's all right. She's gone out of her way to look nice for you, Rowdy. You should appreciate it. Well, I do, Grandma. I do. The dining room should be closing soon. How about you and her? Oh, come on now, Grandma. Rowdy, I'm a little old for a walk in the moonlight. Anyhow, I want to finish my scarf. Hmm. Here you are. Jay. <laughs> Rowdy and I were just one. Oh, come on, Grandma. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> you wouldn't think a boy his age would be bashful now, would you? Uh, Grandma, uh, when I want to ask her out, you know, I'm perfectly capable of doing it myself. We'll ask her. See? I'm sure Jane wouldn't mind you walking her home. Oh, but I don't go home right away. I have to... I know. Bring your dad his supper. How did you know? I met him at the bank. Oh, he's a wonderful-looking man. Isn't he rowdy? In fact, why not let me bring him his supper? After all, you are a little too young for me, rowdy. So that's yeah. why you wanted Rowdy and me? It's part of it. Well, in that case, Jane, I guess maybe you and me ought to take a little stroll and so let the old folks 
be by themselves. I wouldn't mind. Man has a hard time keeping up with her. This is right nice of you, Mrs. Briggs. Well, Rowdy's such a sweet boy, and oh, that girl of yours is just a dear. Well, I'm glad she's stepping out for a change. You know, I ought to be proud she's so devoted. But it ain't right for a girl not to enjoy herself now and then. My sentiments exactly. More coffee? Please. You know, if it uh, wasn't for Grandma, I suppose I'd be back there in that smoky old saloon trying to lose my money. <laughs> I've seen lots of drovers. Gambling and drinking seems all they care about. Yeah, well, you know, all those months on the trail, you work up a powerful thirst. Aren't there other things? I mean... Yeah. Yeah, there are other things. To the right. Pearl three. Evening, ma'am. Oh, Sheriff. You gave me a start. Ah, oh, now, lovely evening, isn't it? Isn't it rather late for you to be out alone? Oh, I always take a walk before retiring. But I'd be pleased if you'd see me back to the hotel. The pleasure'd be mine. Oh, and would you be so kind as to carry this? I'm tired enough now to sleep sound as a dollar. You should. What have you got in here, bricks? Of course. And all solid gold. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Who is it? Uh, it's me, Rowdy. Come in. Oh. Hi, Grim. I, I uh, saw the light. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be up at this hour now. I wanted to give you your present. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a great time. She's uh, quite a gal. <laughs> I knew you'd get along. I'm going to miss you both. Oh, when you get back there with your family, you're going to forget all about us. No, I won't. And so she won't forget me. Oh, Grandma. <laughs> now, if you'll get a glass from your room, we'll have a goodbye drink together. Goodbye? Oh, I... I mean good night. All righty. my medicine. Well, Rowdy, you made an old lady very happy. If I've caused you any trouble, I apologize. Well, I didn't exactly have the kind of time I was figuring on, but... I know. I had a better one, Grandma. Oh. Something the matter? Well, I don't know. I think I got the wrong glass here or something. This is the glass with your medicine in it. Oh, I, I, I'm afraid I did make a mistake. Well, here. Oh, that's all right. It tastes terrible anyway. <laughs> well, all medicine does, Grandma. Come on now. now Rowdy, no. Now, oh. the doc wouldn't have given you this stuff if it wasn't right for you, Grandma. Come on. Rowdy, please, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. Now, come on, drink this up before I pour it no, down your little throat. <laughs> Last thing in the world I'd want is anything to happen to you. Uh, you get yourself a good night's sleep. Good night, Grandma. Come on, Pop, 
you've got to remember more than that. I can't. She was the last one here. Please, can't you see he's doing the best he can? Practically cleaned out while he's asleep. Oh, Sheriff. I got here as soon as I could. Any idea who did it? That man. I think he was in on it. I might have guessed it. Do you ever see such workmanship? Look at the fit. Say, uh, I I'm looking for a present. Uh, something for an um, elderly type lady. All right, Yates. You sure this is the man? Yeah. He kept me busy while they looked things over. You're under arrest. What are you talking about this time? I knew it. What'd he steal this time? The vault's been looted of $10,000. The vault? Why, Mrs. Briggs' money's in there. So's a lot of other people's. But she is the one, Sherry. Mrs. Briggs. Pop said she came into the bank last night. Are you loco accusing Grandma of being a bank robber? I met her right outside the bank last night myself. Now you better start talking, Yates. Look, Sheriff, you're after a bandit. There's one of them right there. I'll stake my life on it. Where? Right there. Careful, dear. Easy. Hold that. Hold that. I'll, uh, I'll be right back, sugar. Look, Sheriff, I'm telling you, that's the fella who stole the carriage from Mrs. Briggs. He's one of the outlaws we met there on the trail. Well, that man's no outlaw. Yeah, I'll prove it. Yates, come back here. Get up. Hold it right there. Get away from those horses. You ain't going nowhere, mister. Stop that, Yates. Ask him where his partner is, Sheriff. He's the one who stole the carriage. Hold it. But that's Colonel A.G. A.G.? Well, you saw it, Sheriff. He assaulted me without provocation. I demand that you arrest him. He's under arrest already for bank robbery. I'm not surprised. He accused you of stealing that carriage from an old lady. Old lady? She's the one that stole it from me and my wife's jewels as well. She couldn't have. There was somebody else with her. The deputy said a man riding a blaze face. Just what kind of a horse you ride, Yates? A blaze face? Sorrel. Look, Sheriff, you've got to believe me. I didn't rob no bank. I, I came here to see Colonel Agee. And you will, sir. In court. Raise your eyes. Go ahead and search me, Sheriff. But I'm, I'm ramrodding the herd outside of town. Gene knows that. He could be telling the truth, Sheriff. What's this? It's a present Mrs. Briggs gave me. Jane, I'm going to have to tell him about last night. I, I wasn't anywhere near the bank. I, I... You recognize this? Stamped with the name of your bank. Oh, Rowdy. All right, where's the rest of it? Where's the old lady? I know the number of their rooms. He sure had me fooled. Just the way she fooled Pop. Take him to jail. Come on. I didn't see her leave, Sheriff. Who's in that room? Yates. Search it. Mattress, everything. Hmm. Not here. Do you really think she would be? Oh, that's locked, Sheriff. It belongs to another room. Well, she skipped all right. Leaving Yates holding the bag. It's still hard to believe. A man could have done this. Maybe even Rowdy. But an old lady. Well, Jane, it's like they say. There's only one thing tougher than a buzzard. And that's an old one. Finally caught up to you, huh? I'm sorry, Rowdy. Really. Not half as sorry as I am. You 
really took me for a sucker. Now I won't be able to get the payment for my cattle. But Rowdy... Came in real handy, didn't I? Help you steal the jewels from the colonel and Eames' wallet and even money from the bank. Yeah, I was a real prize sucker. All right. So I'm not a sweet old lady. I've been a dance hall girl, a card shop. My first husband was a gunslinger. Anything more I can tell you? Little grandchildren from back east. That's true, Rowdy. So is this... this picture. Yeah, the boy who looks like me. Come on, Mr. Singer. All right, Yates. Sorry about the mistake. Mistake? Yeah, she told us all about it when she brought the money back. You mean you came back on your own? They didn't catch you? I guess I played Grandma a little too long, Rowdy. I, I sort of got stuck with it, just like you. All those things I said to you. I deserved it. I played you for an easy mark. Could you forgive me? Please? Oh, of course I do, Grandma. Just, I hate seeing you in here like this, and uh, I, I don't know what to do. Oh, I'm an old woman. No matter what they give me, I'll never serve my time. Oh, don't say that. All right. Now, Colonel Agee's waiting for you at the bank. You got a job to do. Remember? All right. But I'll be back. I'll, I'll think of something, Grandma. Don't hurry. I'm not going any place. There you are, Mr. Yates. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Colonel. Maybe now I can get back to my bride. Jane, I'm sure sorry about what happened, you know. Oh, I know. Hey, Mr. Sims, I, I don't think you ought to blame James Pop. Yeah, you're right. If that old lady pulled the wool over all our eyes... Doc! Doc, I've been looking all over for you. You've got to come quick. What's the trouble, Sheriff? It's Mrs. Briggs. I think she's had a heart attack. <gasps> oh, dear. My carriage! She's stealing my carriage! on back. We'll check for some more strays down the way. Anybody need to get cured or something? Well, he's kind of out of the way, isn't he? Yeah, nothing to sell to out here except gophers, maybe. Mike P's taking a shortcut to Buffalo Gap. Yeah, this is the shortest way. That trail will take him twice as long. It's none of our business. Come on.
Uh, you gentlemen didn't arrive a second too soon. I want to thank you. Well, glad we could help out. We, uh, we're out chasing some strays and spotted you down here. Well, I want to thank those strays, too. Your drovers. Yeah, we got a herd over the way. Can't figure what those Indians would want with you. My medicine? Medicine? Yeah, it doesn't taste too bad, and it's got a kind of a kick. What's in it? A little of this, a little of that. Mostly alcohol, huh? Yeah, I got a little of that, too. Well, uh, thank you again. You're true knights of the road. Hey, I wouldn't uh, be going off by yourself if I was you. You, uh, you know, those Indians might come back. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got much choice. Well, you can ride along with us, go back to the herd. We'll be taking off tomorrow, ride along as far as the next town, huh? That's very kind. I appreciate that. Are you sure your boss wouldn't mind? No, he's over in Fort Liberty. He won't mind anyway. You're more than welcome. I'm Dr. George Timpson. I'm Ruddy Yates, doctor. This is Clint Forrester. Howdy. Howdy. Where's Frank? I don't know. There's something wrong with you. Frank. You a real doctor? No. Funny thing. I didn't even know them engines hit me at first. Then my shirt, I, I felt it. It was all red. I didn't know till then. I didn't know. Well, uh, we'll use your wagon, put him in that, take him back to camp. Crew's gonna want to give him a burial. Skimpy roll being all of a man's worldly goods. Yeah, mighty cold comfort for a young wife and two little babies. Two babies? Oh, yeah. Well, he must have something coming. Yeah, about eleven dollars, I figure. Well, I can't sweeten that very much. Uh, hold it. I thought you said you were broke, and I asked that loan back. It must have stuck to the bottom of the pocket. Come on, everybody toss something a little, make you feel better. Play, how about it? Oh, yeah, I got two dollars, but it ain't gonna do any good that way. Every little bit's gonna help out. Come on, chip in. So, you raise maybe sixty dollars. Well, you may as well throw a drowning man a matchstick to hang onto as that. You suggesting we just forget about Frank's family? No, but we could make it grow into something. Well, what do you want us to do? Plant it in the ground and sprinkle it? Well, it's slow, but that's one way. No, I was thinking of betting it. There must be a poker game or two in the next town. You always got an angle, ain't you? Look, if our luck runs hot, we can send something worthwhile to that family. And if it runs cold? Well, like I said, uh, $60 isn't going to matter much one way or another. Oh, you got a real low opinion of $60. Must mean something if it takes all of us to raise it. Gentlemen, I, uh, I didn't know Frank. But he died trying to save my life, and, well, I'd like his family to have all the money possible. Uh, you feel like bucking that poker game? Wouldn't be any risk, not in the kind of a game that I'm thinking about. What do you mean? Well, maybe you heard. There's a boom up at Coteville. They discovered silver up in the mountains, and this bunch of car jocks moved in. One of them owns a saloon. Well, they, they get some prospect during the game, or anybody with a role, and they let him win for a while till he feels pretty cocky, and then they take him right down to his long johns. Well, we ain't gonna come out ahead playing a game like that. We could if we quit at the right time. Now, whoever we stake would play as long as he keeps winning. And the minute his luck turns, get out of the game. Now, that'd work. You say uh, quit at the right time. You think they're just gonna let him get up and take off like that? No, it'd have to look like he's coming back. No, it's too dangerous. Unless, of course, one of you two wanted to do the winning and walking out. Well, they know me and, and Clay wouldn't be any good. We got to get somebody that looks like a real pigeon. Somebody that they think is dumb enough to swallow the whole bait. Mercy! 
Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wishbone. I shouldn't have forgot something. Forgot what? Well, I stacked all the dirty dishes in this pan to take to the stream to wash. And I forgot it was still hot. Oh, no, no, you're not thinking about mush. He can play poker, can he? Well, about the way he can cook. Won't matter. They'll let him win no matter what he does. Oh. Uh, no, it's too... Uh, Mr. Faber wouldn't allow it. Mr. Faber ain't here. I'm in charge, and I think it's a pretty good idea. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, take the herd up as far as Coltville, and then four or five of us will go in town with Mushy. Scarlett, I think you'd better go out and uh, get a little donation from some of the other men. Uh, the bigger roll we got, the better it's going to look. Does this sound all right to you, fellas? What do you think, Wish? All right, there's just one thing. Yeah, what's that? What's Mushy think? Mushy, we're almost there. Well, Mr. Wishbone, I don't think I can go through with it. I don't even feel like me. Now, sure you can. You look fine. All spruced up. What'd you have to cut out so much for? Feel naked. Now, you don't think a man with money burning holes in his pockets is gonna go around looking like he needs a haircut? Well, Mr. Wishbone, they know I'm no rich prospector. Now, how are they gonna know that? You got money in your pocket, and it don't take any brains to dig. You'll be all right, Mushy. Just get up from the table when you see the signal. Yeah, and get straight to that telegraph office now, understand? Maybe they won't let me. They're not even going to know what you're up to unless you tell them. Now, you got the address. When you get out of there, just run to that telegraph office and we'll be out of there in no time. We'll be back to the herd before they know what happened. Well, all right. I think. Now, what's the matter? I lost the address. Look in your hat. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Come on, Mushy, perk up. You're supposed to look like you just hit it big. Well, don't I look happy? You look like you just had a tooth pulled. I wish I had, Mr. Roddy. Mushy, I'm depending on you. If you don't do this right, so help me, I'll poison you. You'll never reach Abilene. Well, I'll try my best, Mr. Wishbone. Drinks are on me. Oh, you bought the last round, Mr. Musgrove. That's all right. You fellas been so nice to me. Uh, it ain't every day a fellow makes a strike. <laughs> well, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Bartender? Yes. I uh, set up a bottle and let my friends help themselves. Oh, up here. This is real nice of you, Mr. Musgrove. Let's have the bottle right down here, men. Excuse me. Some old friends. Turkey Creek Johnson. Uh, you're back through here again, huh? Yep. Gotta go where the money is. You know, from what I just heard, I may be selling that old medicine wagon and doing a little prospecting. See that fella up at the bar standing treat? Just struck it rich last week without even trying. Just taking down his tent and bang, there it was. Pretty lucky. Fifty dollars a ton. And he hasn't got enough brains to yell for help if he was drowning. The man's got luck. He don't need no brains. Say, uh... You think he might like to sit in with us? Do you mean poker? Well, the boys and me need some fresh blood, and if he's got that kind of luck, poker might be his game. Seems to me he'd need a little more than luck to sit in with you fellas. You a good friend of his? Well, no, I'm not a good friend. I just met him down the street in a saloon with a drovers. Well, I'll tell you what. You get him over here, and we'll give you a piece of our winnings. There's a token of appreciation. How much of a piece? Five percent. Easiest money you ever made. Well, uh... I'll get him over here. I won't guarantee you the play. You leave that up to us, huh? They want to meet you. Boys, meet Mr. Musgrove. Uh, Turkey Creek Johnson's my name. You just call me Turkey Creek. This here's Naughty Matthews. 
How are you? Bill Connors and Hugo Fuller. Hi. We heard about the strike you made, and uh, the boys and me want to congratulate you. Well, the doc said you wanted me to play poker with you. Yeah, that too. Uh, we thought a little game would give us a chance to get acquainted. All right. I knew the minute I seen you, you was a man of decision. Uh, five card draw, Joker Wild, all right? Fine with me, Mr. Goose Creek. Turkey Creek. Would you like to cut? Oh, thank you. Mr. Musgrove. Oh, I'll pass. I mean, uh, five dollars. Gentlemen, don't mind. Five dollars more. Never seen luck like yours, but I guess I never learned to stay out of a hand. I'll see it. Well, it's straight. Afraid I've got a full house. Your deal, Mr. Mushgrove. Oh, I say, uh, I got to send a telegram. Would you gentlemen excuse me for a few minutes? Oh, I'm sure the doc here can do it for you. Oh, no. Uh, it's business, my partner. Uh, I mean, I better do it myself. Um, hey, the doc here, he can play for me while I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure, if you trust me. Oh, I'm not worried about you, doc. These gentlemen been so nice to me, I wouldn't want to slow up their game. Well, I'll do the best I can for you. Well, I'll be right back. My deal. Oh, there it is. Walk out of here this minute, it won't look right. Are you the telegraph man? I want to send some money. It's to Frank Miller and his folks. Oh, I got his address here somewhere. Oh. Oh. Hmm. That Mr. Wishbone, he's going to poison me for sure. Money if he wasn't coming back. <laughs> he even left his hat. Why don't I just run down to the telegraph office and check? No. Bill and Nani would be better. You just stay here.
Tell your friend that ain't the way we gamble in this town. I... I tried, Mr. Wishmo. I know, Mush, I know. Yeah, come on. He was trying to run out all right. You, uh, you don't think that I had anything to do with this, do you? You just might have. Well, why would I? I was going to get a piece of your winnings, wasn't I? Uh-huh. Maybe you're going to get a piece of his, too, huh? Maybe you were partners with him. You owe money everywhere, Doc. Maybe you were just waiting for the big kill, huh? Look, you asked me to bring him over. I didn't ask you. If you're going to find somebody to blame, blame yourself. Oh, you ever find out this was a trick of yours? You won't. Here. I don't want you to think I'm trying to get away with that, either. The way it happened, Mushy did the best he could, and it just didn't work out. We don't owe this kid anything anyway. What the heck? He knew the chances he was taking when he signed up for this drive. But any one of us, any one of us, be you tomorrow, and and you wouldn't ask for any charity, would you? Saddle up. We're gonna move out. Take your wagon and fall in behind the chuck wagon. You better get down from there. Come on, come on, get down, get down. Who are you? You're making some kind of mistake, aren't you? No mistake, Dr. Stimson. Well, now look, I did sign a couple of IOUs in Bentleyville, but they're good. With me, a gambling debt is a thing of Gambling debt? I'm not interested in your gambling debt. Hello, George. How are you? Melinda, what are you doing out here? I came looking for you. I had to hire a Pinkerton man, and even then, you led us quite a chase. A Pinkerton? <laughs> well, well, Dr. Stimson, on the run again? Still a gambling man, huh, George? Sam Garner? How are you? Sam! <laughs> what are you doing? You, you helping the Pinkerton man, or you taking care of Melinda? Uh, a little bit of both. Say, boys, I, I want you to meet my wife, Melinda, and my friend, Sam Garner. This is uh, Rowdy and um, Clay, Howdy Joe, Howdy. Mushy, and Wishbone. G.W. Wishbone, ma'am. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> and uh, these are well, the... Don't just everybody just stand here. Maybe these people would like to talk without an audience. Come on. Well, Melinda, shall I tell them or will you? Sam, would you and Mr. Logan mind waiting for me in the carriage? Melinda, when you just showed up out of nowhere, I, I thought my heart was going to jump right out of my chest. You changed your mind, you came back to me? I came to talk to you. You know, I tried to be what you wanted me to be, settle down in one town, but it, it felt like somebody was holding my arms behind me. I decided to break free. You love your freedom. Oh, I hoped you'd come back. To the medicine wagon? Why did you come back, Melinda? Sam wants me to marry him. So I, I came to ask you for a divorce. Sam will make you a good husband. <sighs> yes, yes, he will. He's a fine man. Melinda, listen. It wasn't all bad on the road. We had fun. Don't you remember when you got up in the wagon and sang and all the people crowded around and they loved it? And I'll get you something, something you've always wondered. You remember the mirror, the full length one? George, please. You really love Sam? You don't, you know you don't. I do love him. I love him in, in a different way, in a way that that's good for me.
You and Sam planning on leaving soon? There's no reason to stay. I thought of asking you a favor, but uh, I guess I won't. What is it? I thought of asking you to sing again. Oh, not on the wagon. Not, not a, a show, a free show from a medicine wagon, but a real performance in a real theater over at Coldfield. I haven't sung in almost a year. And besides that, Sam would never... Well, Linda, there was a boy killed. He left a wife and two kids. I'm sorry, George. I've given up singing. I couldn't face audiences anymore. I owe this boy my life. But don't you see, they're not going to pay to hear me. They've never even heard of me. They will when I get finished. Listen, Melinda, please. You know me. I never worried about debts, did I? I always let the other fellow worry, but this is different. I owe this boy's family a debt, and if I don't start to repay it, I just won't be able to sleep again. All right, maybe George Simpson is changing, but I know that I feel differently now thinking about somebody else for the first time. You think that they really would pay to hear me sing? Even if they didn't like music, they would pay just to look at you. <laughs> well, I gotta get the boys busy on this. We gotta advertise. We'll make posters and a banner. We'll make a banner. Ready? Just like old times, Melinda, the day before the performance. Are you as excited as I am? Pleasantly. I still don't approve of this whole idea. It'll be all right, Sam. Of course it will. Now, come along. I want you to see the hall where you're going to sing. Melinda knows what small town halls look like. But this one's different. It's in the back of the saloon. Saloon? You'll have a whole saloon full of people staring at her. And telling their friends about her. The posters are fine, but when you're advertising Melinda, one glimpse is worth a thousand words. What are you interested in selling? The way Melinda looks or the way she sings? A little of both. Let's go, Melinda. All right, gentlemen, place your bets. Five thousand on the credit. I'm sorry, sir. Turkey Creek, Miss Jenny Lynn, Mr. Sam Garner. This is the most illustrious citizen of Coltville, the proprietor of this splendid establishment and a businessman of extraordinary daring. What he's trying to tell you, ma'am, is that I'm a gambler and there's nothing very illustrious about that except that I'm in the presence of the great Jenny Lynn. <laughs> sure is nice of you to sing here for us after you've been singing in all them fancy places. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh... Turkey Creek Johnson. How come you know anyone as famous as Miss Lynn? Well, in the old days, I used to accompany her, and since she's traveling without an accompanist, she gave me that privilege for this one concert. We just dropped by to look at the hall. Well, you play one sour note, and you got me to answer to. I'll buy the first two tickets. One hundred dollars. That's for luck, ma'am. Don't you sell none for less. These fellows here can afford it, most of them. Not a one accepting standing room, of course, which is ten dollars. George, this is without a doubt the cheapest. Now, Melinda, wait a minute. It's not finished yet. I've got the drovers out. Melinda's working. not talking about the stage. How could you tell them in there that I was Jenny Lynn? Shh. Believe me, Melinda, all anybody in this town knows about Jenny Lynn is that she's a beautiful woman who sings like a nightingale, and you cannot deny that you fit both those descriptions. It's one thing to ask Melinda to help out a widow and some orphans. It's quite another to ask her to be a fraud, Jenny Lynn. Well, I almost believed you this time. I really did. You can still believe me. Every penny is going to Frank Miller's family. With Melinda Stimson, it would have been pennies. But with Jenny Lynn, it's going to be a fortune. Didn't you hear Turkey Creek set the admission price $50 a seat? Why, I'll bet you the real Jenny Lynn never drew that kind of money. And I'll bet you if we ever meet the real Jenny Lynn, she'd be the first one to agree. Why, she'd even buy a ticket for $50. Oh, George, you're impossible. Even supposing it was not dishonest, it's dangerous. Do you realize Jenny Lynn's picture was in the last Harper's? Nobody in this town reads Harper's. As a matter of fact, very few people in this town can read. Melinda's traveled up and down this whole part of the country with you. Yes. Yes, and just suppose that one of them remembers me as the girl on your pitch wagon. That was a long time ago. Too long. Melinda, you never used to worry about things like this. 
Do you remember the sheriff that we told you were from the temperance union out to test my elixir? <laughs> he was gullible even for a sheriff. Oh, well, he would have believed it if you told him you were the Queen of Sheba. And I remember that gambler who had a collection of your IOUs. Remember he showed up on the same stagecoach? You got so scared you jumped and got your coat caught in the door? He's trying to trick you. Melinda, please. Just this once. Well, maybe Jenny Lind would understand and forgive. Just this once. in here, I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Oh, just a minute, sir. A little something for your trouble. A couple of tickets for the show tonight. Where's Melinda? Oh, she'll be back in a minute. She went to the seamstress. Oh. Has it occurred to you, George, that you might have a better chance if you put up an honest fight? What are you talking about? Why did you ask Melinda to do this performance with you? Well, you know, Sam. Eleven dollars on a bedroll isn't going to be much help to a drover's family. Now, George, that's just part of it. The real reason was, give Melinda a taste of the old life and she'd never go back. You'd have her. Melinda can't be forced to do anything she doesn't want to do. I love her, George. I love her very much. I believe you do. If you want to fight for her, if you want to fight me, fine. But at least fight fair. I know I'm second choice. And if you cared enough about her to give her what I'm offering, she'd probably choose you. Well, Linda knows what kind of a man I am. She knows what I can give her. What can you give? A lot of rainbows to chase? Not what she really wants. What do you think she really wants? A woman like Melinda has a right to have a real life, to have children and a home that isn't on wheels, and a husband who isn't always one jump ahead of the sheriff. Did you see how Melinda looked when she swept into that saloon? She was radiant, flush with life. That's the real Melinda, not the one you have in mind. Mr. Wishbone says the house is all sold out. Thanks to Miss Jenny Lynn? You haven't eaten. I'll order you something. Oh, thank you. No, I'm not hungry. Well, should we start rehearsing? Well, you know all the songs. I thought we'd run over them just for fun. Well, which one will we do first? How about uh, Beautiful Dreamer? All right. Uh, I think I'll go down and take a walk. Why don't you stay, Sam? Uh, no, you'll be better off alone. All right. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Well, that's quite a bundle. Looks like you got as much as the rest of them. Yeah, that's the easiest money I ever made. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Garner. How's this look to you? Well, that's fine, fine. Say, where's the owner of this wagon? Well, he's rehearsing for the concert tonight. Well, I, I got a mirror he bought. Mirror? What's he want with a mirror? He hasn't got a dressing room. Uh, it's for his wagon. I understand there's a lady traveling with him. Well, put it in the wagon if you've been paid. No, George. You know you still love me. I think you better go. Well, is it true or isn't it? I don't know. It is. You know it is. You didn't come out here to ask for a divorce. Yes, I did. No, you're right, I didn't. And Sam knows it. I came out here to make one last try to get you to come back home to Chicago. Forget about Chicago. There are brand new towns springing up all over. New faces, new people. Well, we'll see California, the Pacific. I can't do that to Sam. It'd be much more cruel to marry him. Now, look, I'll bring the wagon around after the show and we'll get in and head west. 
Mrs. Stimson. out there. I hope our Nightingale do not keep him waiting too long. Don't worry, I sent Wishbone for her. There's one thing that bothers me. What's that? Letting all those folks out there think she is who she ain't. <sighs> just cheating cheaters. If they hadn't spent that money on those tickets, they'd have just lost it on Turkey Creek's gambling tables. We're just taking his money, and you gotta admit he owes it to us after stealing Mushy's winning. Well, now that makes me feel better. Well, not for long, it won't. Pretty soon, none of us are gonna feel good. What's the matter? Where's Melinda? She took off with that Garner fellow about a half an hour ago. I just saw the hotel clerk. She's headed for the stage connection to the east in a rented rig. It can't be. Well, the hotel room's empty. The trunk and everything's gone. Did you have a fight with her or something? No. No, nothing like that. Well, what are we gonna do about all those people out there? And Turkey Creek Johnson and his hired guns. Well, we got their money. We can always return it. We don't still have their money. That's gone. Gone where? We sent it off to Frank's family to make sure they got it this time. Look, she's only been gone about a half an hour. If you think you can stall those people out there, I'll go after her. No. No, she obviously doesn't want to sing here. I don't care what she wants. I'll drag her back if I have to. Do me a favor, will you, Clay? Yeah? Hurry. You bet. Trouble with a capital T. All right, where is she? Uh, Miss Jenny Lynn? Well, you understand about great artists. They, they're often late. As a matter of fact, she once kept the Queen of England waiting a half hour. I ran out on her? Uh, no, oh no. A true artist never runs out on an audience. Then you tell me why she took a buggy to travel from the hotel next door to here. Oh, that? Mm-hmm. Well, the great singers, you know, they got to have their lungs full of good fresh air. Isn't that right, Doc? You tell him. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, tension, uh, stage fright, uh, stale air. Uh, if you knew Jenny Lynn, you'd realize that every night before a concert, she always takes a brisk walk. In a buggy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she needs air in her lungs, just as Mr. Wishbone said. Now, you know, Turkey, we have a very dusty town here, and uh, if she went walking, she'd uh, ruin her dainty shoes. She better not keep me waiting any longer than she kept the queen. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if she don't show, you're not only gonna return everybody their money, but you're gonna make up for my losses. What losses? The winnings I'm not winning out there while me and my customers are sitting in here wasting our time. You know your wife, you think she's gonna come back? Well, anybody like to step out and tell that crowd they're not gonna see a performance? Plus the interesting fact they're not gonna get their money back either. I have confidence in Clay. If we could just stall him a little, maybe you could uh, play something on the organ, huh, Doc? All right, draw the curtain. Wishbone, introduce me. Oh, I'm not accustomed to public speaking. Come on, you'll use up time. Well, he ain't very pretty, but maybe he can sing. <laughs> You'd like to do the talking, you can come up here on the stage. I'd like to introduce the first number of this gala performance, Dr. George Stimson at the organ. Building up a bad mood. Boo! 
I'd swing those horses and follow me back to Coldville. No, I can't go back there. You can and will. But they found out who I am. George and everybody had to run. Who told you that? I did. I told her. Well, you'd better tell her something else, mister. Look, ma'am, your husband, they're, they're all trying to stall those people back there. Now, if you don't get back, there's going to be a mass lynching. Why'd you do it, Sam? I was afraid I'd lose you if you stayed. And you could just leave them with the crowd. I love you, Melinda. I'm sorry. Driver, turn around. Park. they're going to take. Roddy, why don't you go out and sing? <laughs> yeah. You lost your mind or something? I can't, I can't sing to them. Well, yeah, just sing like you do to the beeves. That's good enough. Look, boys, those are cattle. These are people out here, and they got guns. Let me ask you something. How many tickets did you sell to this affair? About $1,500 worth, I suppose. Then you haven't got much choice. They're not going to let you out of town roll anyway. You know the song, uh, Beyond the Sun? Just sing it, I'll follow. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jenny Lind. Well, she, uh, she asked that I uh, sing one of her all-time favorite type songs. <laughs> There's a place my heart's longing to be Beyond the sun, over the mountain There's a face my eyes hunger to see The long, long road seems like an endless thing Somewhere, someplace, there is a home Beyond the sun, over the mountain, there are lonely arms waiting for me. My boy's doing fine. Yeah. Waiting for me. Uh, all right, Joe, it's your turn. Me? Yeah, uh, you can do some rope tricks. Get his rope, Wish. Well, they see roping every day. Maybe some of them can rope as good as me. Oh, come on now, go on. Uh, we got a couple of rope tricks here I thought might be entertaining while we're waiting for Miss Lynn. next do what cook uh, talk to him about what i don't have anything to say well, look we're all gonna be saying our prayers if you don't find something to talk about here here's some funny jokes in my almanac all right <laughs> ladies and gentlemen while we're waiting i'd like to tell you a couple of funny stories i heard the other day it's really a funny story put the gun down you'll need both of those hands to applaud Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's Jenny Lynn. Beautiful dreamer, wake.
speak unto me Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee Sounds of a rude world heard in the day Lulled by the moonlight have all passed away Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song List while I woo thee with soft melody Gone are the cares of life's busy throng Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me on my own. Sam lied to me. He said that someone had recognized me and that you and the drovers had run away. Sam said that? And I was furious with you for not coming to me and just leaving like that. But I thought... Oh, Melinda, I thought you had changed your mind about me. I've never changed my mind about you, George. I almost did. Well, you're back now. Come on. We'll... No, you don't understand. I almost decided to go away with you. I was tempted, but I changed my mind. You see, you don't really need me. And Sam does. But do you need Sam? I think so. Yours is the big dream. But there are little dreams, and they're just as important. You've always offered me a ride on a comet. But Sam offers me solid ground. You understand, don't you? Good luck, George. I want to catch Sam before he leaves town. Say, Doc, that's too bad. Yep. Too bad about something else, too. I had all these people here. I had them. Think of how many bottles of my golden remedy I could have sold. Wait a minute. I'm a big man in this town now. I accompanied the great Jenny Lynn. Tomorrow, I'm gonna set up my wagon out in the street. And you just watch. I'll get him. Tell you what I'm gonna do, folks. For the first five bottles sold here today, I'm going to give away to you absolutely free another bottle of my gold.